Good morning and welcome to Worshipping Together at Home on the sixth Sunday after Easter. It's lovely to have you with us this morning. So let's worship together. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As one and as many, come and celebrate the love of God. In silence and words, offer your prayers. In humility and integrity, bring all that you are. Come, celebrate the love of God. Amen. Bless our God, O peoples, let the sound of his praise be heard. We will bless you, O living God, for you hear our prayers. See, what is unknown to many, we will declare. We will declare the word and works of God. So come, let us worship the living God. We will bless the Father, we will bless the Son, we will bless the Holy Spirit, our living God who is one. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And let's join together in our first hymn, All My Hope on God is Founded. We join together in the prayer of approach. In your love we trust, Creator God. Your love for your world, your love for each one of us. Your love that invites us to love others, to love our souls and to love you. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, receive our love now and our thanks. Amen. Of course we know there are times when we don't always love us. God would have us love. Times when we fail to love ourselves, our neighbours and indeed to love God. So let's now in a time of quiet offer those times to him to receive his gracious forgiveness. We join together in the words of confession on the sheet. Gracious God, where bridges have been broken and relationships damaged, forgive us and bring reconciliation. Where love has been compromised and hearts broken, forgive us and bring healing. Where silence has allowed oppression to flourish, forgive us and bring justice. Where we have turned away from you and been poor witnesses, 
Forgive us and bring understanding. In Jesus' name, Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. And we join together in the prayer of praise and thanksgiving. God of truth, as we give thanks for all we know of your love, we praise you for all we are yet to learn. As we give thanks for all you reveal in scripture, we praise you for all we are yet to discover. As we give thanks for the presence of Christ within us, we praise you for all the ways we have yet to grow. As we give thanks for the gift of prayer, we praise you for all the ways in which we are yet to be changed. For all we know and for all we do not yet know, we praise you in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we have our first reading. First reading this morning is from Acts chapter 17. Paul stood up in the meeting of the Ergopos and said, Men of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with an inscription to an unknown God. Now, what you worship as something unknown, I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. And he's not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. For one man, he was made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole world. And he determined the time set for them and the exact places they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out to him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offering, spring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by man's design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For well, he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. We're going to sing our second hymn now, How Deep the Father's Love for Us.
Our second reading comes from John's Gospel, chapter 14. Jesus said, If you love me, you will obey my, what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it never, neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and you in him. And I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me any more. But you will see me, because I live, you will also live. On, the day, on that day you will realise that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The focus of this morning's reading from John's Gospel is on love, the relationship of mutual love between father and son, which the disciples through the Spirit are now made part. Over and over again in this final time together, Jesus talks about love as that which will keep them together and in touch with him, as it has kept him in touch with the Father. Furthermore, to live a life of love is to live in obedience to God. John's Gospel gives us five chapters full of Jesus leaving instructions, intensive teaching and reassurance, preparing the disciples for a time when he would no longer be with them. During this time, Jesus concentrates on one main theme. Though he will not be with them in flesh, they are not to be left alone, for he will be with them in a new way. In a foreshadowing both of Pentecost and his second coming, Jesus promises that they will not be forsaken. This is a tender, nurturing Jesus who gave his followers emotional support, even as the shadow of the cross lie over him. Perhaps we sometimes need to allow ourselves to feel the impact of this tenderness. Jesus said, I will not leave you orphans. He gave assurance. He made the disciples aware of the resources they would have when he was gone. The Holy Spirit would come among them. Jesus wouldn't be physically seen, but he would be embodied within the community of believers. Jesus asks a lot of the disciples and he seeks their trust. Do we ever feel that God asks too much from us? Or is the reality that we expect more from our souls than God does? Jesus asks much of the disciples because they've grown to trust him, love him and feel able to take risks with him. Losing him would be hard, but they would have what they needed to cope. Jesus doesn't ask more than they have the resources for, and the same is true of us. Jesus also points out the disciples' responsibilities. If they love him, they'll keep his commandments. What Jesus had in mind when he said, if you love me, would involve some very hard work for those who made such a bold claim. Genuine love for Jesus means following Jesus, keeping not just a set of rules, but keeping to a way of life that was exemplified by him. Loving as Jesus loved, serving as Jesus served, doing as Jesus did. When you've caught a glimpse of God's love for you, you can never ignore his commandments. You can never ignore his will for your life because a revelation of his love towards you awakens in a love in you towards him. How can we not love him when we learn how he loves us? When your heart is filled with love towards God, you don't have to look into some religious rule book to decide what to do. No one has to look over your shoulder to make sure that you do the right thing. You do it for one reason alone. You do it because you love Jesus and you want to please him in any way you can. This is what it means to keep Christ's commandments. As much as our society may carry on with fanciful images of true love that don't amount to anything, we all know that true expressions of love must ultimately lead to acts of love. Christ calls us to action because this is the essence of love. Jesus said to his disciples, 
As God was in me, so I shall now be in you, carrying out God's acts of divine love. As the Spirit of God was in Christ, so is the Spirit of Christ now in us, empowering us, equipping us, teaching us, guiding us in the ways that God would have us go. Jesus promised to those who love him that he would send another one, the Spirit, to be with us in our labour of love. Christ has promised to leave us not alone. He has promised us the unfailing presence of the Spirit in us. And that is all anyone would ever need to bring love into action and carry on the divine work that Christ has given to each of us. If you love me, Jesus says, how do you answer? Our third hymn is one which I know is popular with many of you. Many of you had it at your wedding day, or so you've told me. And for many of you, it embodies what love means to you and the way that love has grown over the years. Love divine or love excelling. And now we declare what we believe. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his Spirit. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning for your church throughout the world. We thank you for the way it reflects your love in every place and in every nation. We thank you for those people that carry your love into the dark places of this world and who long to share 
your gospel with others. We pray that we may have that same seal and enthusiasm for sharing the gospel with those around us, here in our diocese and in our benefice. We pray that others may look at us as a benefice and see your love shining through. Lord, we pray for your world today, a world still saddened by the coronavirus, a world where people are still ill and suffering and dying. And we pray for them and their families. And we pray that a vaccine and the necessary testing uh, may happen and may be found. But Lord, we remember that during this time of deep sadness, the world seems to have stopped to reflect. Your creation shines more gloriously. And all around us, we can see the wonder of that creation. Help us to learn something from this time about the way we treat your world. But Heavenly Father, we also remember that other things in the world have not stopped. And we pray for those places where there is famine, where there is violence and where there is war. And we pray for your peace and your blessing. Heavenly Father, we pray for our community and we thank you for the way in which we have grown as a community over the past three weeks and months. We thank you for those who have readily volunteered, for those who have continued to work to help others. We give you thanks for our NHS and all other key workers. And we particularly pray for those who are in care homes and struggling to work there. We thank you that we have through this learnt to serve one another and pray. we pray that we will go on serving one another as Christ served us. And we pray for all who are ill this morning, all who need your help for, because they're suffering in any way. And in a moment of quiet we remember before you those known to us. pray that your healing hand will be upon them and that your will will be done. And Heavenly Father, we pray for those who have gone before us, those who now walk the path with you in glory and to know your eternal love for them. We thank you for their lives and all they've meant to so many people. And we pray that one day we too will share with them in your eternal home. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for today. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, ever and ever. Amen. So we come to our final hymn, Lord for the years your love has kept and guided.
And so we come to the final prayer and blessing. Jesus said, I will not leave you orphaned, I am coming to you. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus and bless us with the Father's love. Come Lord Jesus and bless us with the Spirit's inspiration. Come Lord Jesus and bless us with your presence. Come Lord Jesus, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Well, I'm going to go and do communion in a moment on behalf of all of you. Do enjoy your day, whatever it is you're doing. This week, of course, you can get out a bit further and spend a bit more time out having your exercise. So do enjoy the nice weather that we're having. My thanks to Annette Jude for the music again this morning. And I hope that you will join me again next week. But more importantly, I hope that we'll all be able to join together and worship in the same place again very soon. Have a really good week and bye for now.